Well, how many of you are sitting at home with some shoulder pain? It is a common problem that have, has a lot of people suffering. But even though it is common, diagnosis and treatment are challenging. Why is that? Well, we're going to find out with our sponsor, Dr. Arasha Raghi, with the CORE Institute, telling us a little bit about the variety of treatments that are out there for people that are just living with the pain. Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks for being Thanks for having here. me. My pleasure. So uh, what are some of the signs and symptoms that would require a patient to go and seek help from, say, the CORE Institute and, and try and get some of that relief? Well, most patients that come to us usually come to us with pain. And arthritis is generally a painful condition. The pain may start gradually and insidiously, but sometimes it can be preceded by a minor injury and the patient just doesn't get better. Usually when we see the patient, they have complaints of pain during the day, morning stiffness, and as this condition progresses, typically they have more and more pain and they lose function. And basically the most important thing is they continue to have pain with basic activities of daily living. That's when they really come in, when the pain is there on a fairly constant and regular basis. Now let's talk about the difference though between the traditional, say, shoulder pain mm -hmm. and then, you know, basically the, the shoulder replacement mm -hmm. um, kind of short-term discomfort that kind of you get that uh, long-term benefit. Right. So basically shoulder replacement is reserved for patients who have failed other treatment options. These other treatment options include rest, icing, taking anti-inflammatory medications, sometimes, sometimes stretching exercises are used to kind of restore the mobility back to the shoulder. If these symptoms, if these treatment conditions have failed over a period of time and the patient has the right amount of arthritis, is of the right age, then shoulder replacement is a, is a consideration for treatment. So there's a difference between the shoulder replacement and like mm -hmm. a minimally invasive mm -hmm. type of procedure, right? Well, over the past several years, as part of my interest, I've been working on developing a basically doing the same exact procedure but through a smaller, more cosmetically appealing incision. It doesn't have a significant difference currently on the rehab and the post-operative outcomes, but gradually as we evolve in this, in this technique, we're trying to, to do the procedure through a technique that does not involve cutting the muscles. So when we do a shoulder replacement, we have to cut the muscle of the rotator cuff, which is subsequently repaired at the end of the operation. Now we're trying to do the procedure without cutting any muscles, and that will significantly increase their outcome in a faster way. What about, I've, I've heard some lingo thrown around as I was preparing mm -hmm. for this. It was a, a reverse shoulder uh -huh. replacement. Is that what you're talking about this? No, or is that's... that something entirely different? And who's a good candidate right. for that? So in order to have a successful shoulder replacement, you need to have arthritis as well as a rotator cuff muscle that is working well. In the past, patients who did not have a rotator cuff muscle that was functioning because it was torn and it was irreparable, they were not a good candidate for a full shoulder replacement. In those patients, we would do a partial shoulder replacement, and the outcomes usually are not as good. Now, over the past, basically since 2004, where the procedure has been approved for use in the United States, we're able to replace these patients' shoulder, and it, not only does it relieve their pain, but it also restores function to them. And it's through this reverse shoulder Right. What's it called? Reverse shoulder, shoulder replacement. replacement. Okay. Basically what it involves is, you know, the shoulder is a very mobile joint. It's not constrained. The reverse shoulder replacement is a semi-constrained type of a joint, which means that um, instead of replacing the socket with a socket and the ball part of the humerus with a standard stemmed prosthesis, what we do is we implant a metal ball onto your socket, and in the arm bone we implant a prosthesis that is cup-shaped and the two kind of link together and it just fires off the deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle becomes the main elevator of the arm. Dr. Raghi, it sounds like I'm hearing a lot of different options mm -hmm. for patients that suffer and one of them mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be just living with the pain. That's right. So we've got the reverse <clears throat> option, we've got the standard option, we've mm -hmm. got some minimally invasive options, mm -hmm. but what kind of expectations should they have for uh, you know, the after effects and the kind of the mobil mobility and the, and the pain following these procedures? So the most important thing that we try to accomplish is pain relief. We want them to be able to have much less pain with activities of daily living as well as with basic recreational activities. Mm -hmm. Also in patients, we usually are able to achieve better range of motion because arthritis does cause stiffness. Will they be able to play sports and do other activities? Recreational sports, absolutely. You, know, you can play golf, you can play tennis, you can exercise with weights. We kind of modify the way you do things. We don't want you going out there and lifting a lot of heavy repetitive weights overhead. 
but all basic activities of daily living and recreational sports is is uh, is very feasible. So a little this. bit of lifestyle mm. modification, but a lot of relief mm. in the way of the pain. Absolutely, and just remember that you know shoulder replacements are generally for the older patients. We don't like to perform them in patients that are younger, like in their 40s or so. Sometimes we're forced to because we don't have any other options available. But generally, we reserve them for older patients. So you're going to be bringing your expertise, not you personally, Dr. Rocky, mm. but but the uh, the Core Institute yes. to Sonoma and Living throughout mm. the year. And so you know we're really uh, thankful for some of these segments where we can mm -hmm. learn a little bit more about how people can you know achieve the the maximum mo mobility and um, what would be the next thing that we, we would want to uh, to know about the core institute well um, we've been in practice since 2005 here in the valley we currently have six offices we started off with three physicians and we're currently 30 physicians all fellowship trained and we try to bring state-of-the-art to the patients but treat each patient as an individual all right well, thank you so much. Sounds like a good philosophy. Appreciate Thanks. you spending some time with me. My we want to put up some information so that you can find out about the Core Institute and go ahead and take a visit at, at, with them out either in Gilbert, Goodyear, Peoria, Phoenix, Prescott, Sun City West. Uh, those are all of your options. If you would like to schedule an appointment, it's 1-866-974-2671. You can visit with one of the um, fellowship trained physicians at the Core Institute at that number again on your screen. And you can visit them online as well at thecoreinstitute.com.